Trans, that the party has a future and is still seen as a viable tool for national leadership. We encourage our members to pursue their ambitions with a sense of responsibility to strengthen and not weaken our unity and solidarity, and to focus all our attention and energy on that big and main task of any political party, which is to take power. We therefore agreed not to allow election activities to be the source of divisions or cause cracks in ODM. The elections must be seen as a friendly match and not a do or die affair. We deliberated on the developments in other political parties and their implications for the nation and for democracy. In particular, the committee expressed deep concerns over developments in the UDA party, where public officers paid by taxpayers from all political formations have been appointed as party officials to various organs. We are staring at the return of the party state system last seen in the 1980s, where party leaders and public servants were one and the same thing. What followed was a youth wing with watchdog or surveillance responsibilities over the entire nation. We take the position that this development is wrong. It is a recipe for chaos and dictatorship and partisanship in the management of public affairs. Consequently, we demand that all those people who have been named as UDA officials must immediately resign from public service. There is no way they will serve two masters, the public and the UDA party. The meeting further noted with concern what appears to be coordinated attempts to de derail the implementation of the NADCO report. It is becoming apparent that some, if not all, of these court cases are state-sponsored. If indeed elements in the regime are having second thoughts regarding proposals they signed onto out of their own volition, they should come out clearly to say so instead of sponsoring these cases in court. On funding of education, we are of a view that the government is taking teachers, parents and learners for a ride. To date, the government has not submitted capitation for Form 1s, even as they move to the second term. That means schools have had to find alternative ways to provide tuition, accommodation and meals to thousands of Form 1s. Teachers and parents fear that the Term 1 money may never be submitted and could end up in some people's pockets. Teachers don't deserve this kind of strain. The government must therefore release all capitation money to all schools before they reopen for the second term. We see an equally pedestrian and dismissive approach to the doctor's strike and its impact on ordinary Kenyans. There seems to be neither commitment nor capacity by the government to resolve the matter. We take the position that government must immediately respect and implement the 2021 court ruling which directed the Ministry of Health and the 47 county governments to implement the basic salary as per the agreed, signed and registered collective bargaining agreement of 2017-2021. In line with the demands of the striking doctors, the government must ring fence, ring fence health finances by operationalizing the facility improvement fund. We support the call by doctors for the government to allocate at least 15% of its budget to health and to devolve the resources to the counties. We equally support calls by doctors for annual and incremental recruitment of doctors and other healthcare workers until the country attains the recommended levels of staffing for various levels of facilities. That is what the government does with teachers, police and military. Finally, we have reviewed one of the most dubious scandals running in the country currently the scandal of fake fertilizers being distributed to farmers by government agencies and also being disowned by those same agencies within government. It is a scam that goes to the heart of our very survival as a nation. Coming right in the middle of a planting season, the presence and distribution of fake fertilizer and seeds is nothing more than economic sabotage. We therefore reiterate that heads must roll. Officers at the Ministry of Agriculture and those at the Kenya Bureau of Standards and the National Cereals and Produce Board who have direct responsibility for fertilizer, seeds and certif certification must immediately quit their positions and pave way for proper and professional investigations. Those found to be responsible for these criminal activities of supplying fake seeds and fertilizer must be charged with sabotage and engagement in organized criminal activity. The government must immediately devise new ways to procure, secure and distribute quality fertilizer and seeds to farmers who are running out of time. We reiterate that in view of the current delays and confusion 
over fertilizers, the prices of a product to be subsidized further and reduced from the current 2,500 for 50 kg uh, bag to 1,500 as a show of remorse and apology and respect to our farmers. That is the end of the statement. I am sure it is clear and there will be no questions. Perfect. Look at which.